I'm right here in the Global Prayer Center where hundreds of people join us on a weekly basis and thousands of people join us online for one of the largest prayer meetings in the world. Now, if you would like to submit a prayer request, you can go to perrystone.org slash pray and you will see the form there to fill out to submit your prayer request. That will be reviewed this week and your prayer request will be aired the following week. So as we go into this prayer meeting together, we hope that you will find a good place to pray and join us as all of these intercessors from around the world join together to pray for one another. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today here at the Global Prayer Center where we are praying for you as we pray for the world, the country, and many other prayer requests that come into us each week. If you would like to be a partner with us or help us in this task, we have a way that you can give. You can go to perrystone.org and donate there, or here on your screens, there is a place where you can give, and that will help to continue to support the Global Prayer Center. It helps take care of the cost of the facility, the staff, and all of the live streaming so that we can continue to bring this to you and to the nations every single week. Thank you for joining one of the largest and most powerful prayer meetings in the world today. Thank you for being a part of this. God bless you and we love you. I'm right here in the Global Prayer Center where hundreds of people join us on a weekly basis and thousands of people join us online 
for one of the largest prayer meetings in the world. Now, if you would like to submit a prayer request, you can go to perrystone.org slash pray, and you will see the form there to fill out to submit your prayer request. That will be reviewed this week, and your prayer request will be aired the following week. So as we go into this prayer meeting together, we hope that you will find a good place to pray and join us as all of these intercessors from around the world join together to pray for one another. Thank you for joining us here at the Global Prayer Center. We have people arriving right now for prayer and this room is beginning to fill up with intercessors. We're gonna go before the Lord in just a few moments in prayer. We hope that you will get out your Bible, maybe get out your oil or your prayer shawl, however you love to pray and find you a place for the next hour as we approach the throne of God together. everybody to the Global Prayer Center. Um, after a, a week off, we want to thank you guys for joining us in here. We had a wonderful time last week in the prophetic conference and uh, God said a lot of amazing things and, and used some mighty men to uh, preach the word about what's going on in this time. And so uh, now we're back into prayer and um, we've been seeing God do some mighty things, and so our task is not done, but it's just beginning. And I just want to thank you guys for being faithful, uh, those that are in the room and, and those that just join us online. And we have thousands upon thousands that join us each week, and we just believe that prayer starts everything. It's not without prayer that God, God moves through prayer. And so Perry had the word a long time ago to start a prayer thing. Matter of fact, even before the OCI building was uh, there, they started prayer in the prayer barn. And so we've been doing this every Thursday unless a conference comes up, but faithfully for nine, nine years, I think. Uh, is what it is now. Um, so we just want to thank you for joining. So before we start in prayer tonight, um, I, I want to share a scripture um, before before we get into this. And it's uh, 2 Timothy 2, 3, and I'm going to read it out of the Passion Translation. And it says, overcome every form of evil as a victorious soldier of Jesus, the anointed one. For every soldier called to active duty must divorce himself from the distractions of this world so that he may fully satisfy the one who chose him. An athlete doesn't play by the rules, will never receive the trophy, so remain faithful to God. The farmer who labors to produce a crop should be the first one to be fed from its harvest. 
carefully consider all that I have taught you, and may our Lord inspire you with wisdom and revelation in everything you say and do, but make Jesus, the anointed one, your focus in life and in ministry, for he came to the earth as a descendant of David and rose from the dead according to the revelation of the gospel that God has given him. This is the reason I am persecuted and imprisoned by evildoers, enduring the suffering of these chains. But the word of God can never be chained. I endure all these hardships for the benefits of the chosen ones in Christ so that you may discover the overcoming life that is in Jesus Christ and experience a glory that lasts forever. I think this scripture speaks so much to the things that were going on. We're, we're living in a, in a world where everything is shaking. There, there's things going on that is contrary to the God. So it's up to us, um, as it says in the first part of this, to divorce from every distraction. We, we have in a critical moment that we can't be coming into agreement with all the lies of the enemy and everything that's been spoken. We must rely on the word of God and stand upon his word in this hour and speak only his word. We can't come into agreement with the enemy because he only comes to lie, kill, and destroy. So we have to be careful with what with our words and what we say. And that's why this, this scripture talks about that we need to be focused on Jesus and him alone. That's why it's it's in, in the Bible when it talks about when you begin to see these things come to pass, look up for your redemption draws near. Jesus is wanting us in this hour to look to him in all things. He's the one that's going to guide us. He's going to lead us in this hour. We may be going through tough times, but he will never leave us nor forsake us. He will always be, the, be there for us, but we have to open our eyes and ears to hear from him in this hour of the places that he wants us to go, the, the p people that he wants us to speak speak to. So it's critical in this time of this shaking that we know and hear from him because he's the one and the Holy Spirit's the one that can speak through you and to let you know, no, you shouldn't go to this place. No, you shouldn't go here. He's the one that's going to give you that wisdom and revelation that this, this talks about. And we're, we're in that hour where we need wisdom, but we don't only need wisdom, but we need revelation and we need understanding um, of what he wants to do in this hour and where he's going in this hour. An another thing uh, that this Bible, if we keep on enduring, the, its word says that we will be an overcomer and we are going to see the glory. No matter what hits us, no matter what trial or tribulation that, that we face, we have to keep our eyes upon him for he is the author and the finisher of our faith. He will see us through uh, even the hardest times. God is not done with you. He, he is just beginning. He's got good things for you. And the enemy, he wants to come and some, some of us are facing sicknesses. Some of us are facing hardships. He, he's coming to try to distract us from our faith and trying to get us down and this hour. So it's in crucial that we are have ferocious focus upon him and him alone and in, in his word and that we stand in this hour on his word and on his word and anything that's contrary, anything that hits you uh, in your body or any circumstance that's contrary to the word, we don't deny it, it exists. But we stand upon the word because the word is greater and the word is truth in life. So in this hour, we have to stand upon his word and we will see it fulfilled. And we are about to see the greatest move that the church has ever seen. We're about to see the greatest harvest. So it's time for us to stand and take our place as sons and daughters. It's time for us to take the authority that God has given us for he has called us to be an ambassadors to the kingdom. And that is to proclaim his word that the enemy has nothing in us or nothing in us for greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world and, and I just believe that if we stand upon the word just like we seen last week with the decision of Roe versus Wade God is moving there is nothing impossible for God he is moving in this hour we have just beginning that is just the beginning of everything that God wants to do so we are called to be soldiers in the army and to proclaim his word 
that it will come forth and pass. And I don't believe that God is done. Matter of fact, I've seen that uh, Clarence Thomas, he said, now it's time to go after gay marriage. So it is our job to begin to pray and to begin to b- believe that God is going to move in those situations, that there's going to be other courts and that God is not done with the United States, but he is going to heal this land. He is going to restore this land. He is going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And it's up to us to begin to proclaim his word, to see it come to pass. And as we believe and as we proclaim it, we will see God move in impossible situations just like we did last night. So tonight, before we start, um, I want to start off with the Lord's Prayer that we always do. And I do have a few special requests in prayer that I want to get to. And then I've got a group of intercessors up here that's going to join me. And we're going to uh, just go with however the Spirit leads us tonight and what he wants to do. And so we're just going to flow in that. So if you want to start and let's stand and let's do the uh, Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Father, the Lord, we just thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord, that we can come together to seek you, Lord, and seek your face in this hour, Father, Lord. Lord, I thank you that your word says that you never leave us nor forsake us, Father Lord. Lord, that you light up light the way, Father Lord, of the path that we should follow, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that we do not have to lean on our own understandings, but all we have to do is acknowledge you, Lord, and you make our path straight, Father Lord. And Lord, I thank you, God, Lord, that you have chosen us for such a time as this, Father Lord, that you have chosen us for the greatest hour, Father Lord. Lord, that you have put us in at the end time, at the end game, in the last two minutes of the game, Father Lord. Father, I pray, Father, Lord, Lord, that we would be fruitful, Father Lord. Lord, that you would cut away everything, Father Lord, that's not of you in this hour, Father Lord. Lord, that you would prune us in this hour, Father Lord. For, Lord, that it's not anything that's left in us that remains, but it's you that live through us that remains, Father Lord. And, Lord, I just thank you, God. Lord, that you are moving in this hour, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you moved on the Supreme Court's decision last week, Father Lord. Lord, Lord, I thank you for life, Father Lord, that you are a God of life and not of death, Father Lord. But Lord, I thank you so much, Lord, that it goes beyond the life of a child, Father Lord. But Lord, you last week when this decision was made, Father Lord, Lord, that the curse of the land, Father Lord, for the shedding of innocent blood on the land, Father Lord, was removed, Father Lord. And Lord, I thank you, Lord. And Lord, we just partner with you now, Father Lord. Lord, I pray, Father Lord, Lord, that you would guide us and give us the words to speak in this hour, Father Lord. Lord, that we would not be unfruitful, Father Lord, or unwise, Father Lord, with our speech in this hour, Father Lord. But Lord, that we would be the solution, Father Lord, that not just doesn't come with mere words, Father Lord, but Lord, that comes with boldness and power to proclaim your word and your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Father Lord. And Lord, we just thank you, God, that you are a good God. Lord, that you are a just God, Father Lord. And Father, I thank you, God, Lord, that you are moving in this hour, Father Lord. Lord, that you are restoring things, Father Lord, for you are a God of reconciliation, Father Lord. And Lord, I just thank you for it now, Father Lord. Lord, I thank you for your goodness, God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you are a provider, Father Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that even when we go through tough times, Father Lord, Lord, your word says in Psalms 37, Father Lord, Lord, that even if there is a famine around us, Father Lord, we will be satisfied, Lord. Lord, that you do not give your people lack, Father Lord, but they will have plenty, Father Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that it says in Jewel 2, Father Lord, Lord, that before you pour out your spirit, Lord, Lord, that you will restore what the canker worm has stolen, Father Lord. Lord, that you are a God that's going to restore everything, Father Lord. Lord, I thank you, God, for what you're doing, God. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, God. 
that you are so good, Father Lord. Lord, that you are making a way, Father Lord, where there appears to be no way, Father Lord. Lord, that what's impossible with man, Father Lord, is possible with you, Father Lord. Lord, there is nothing that you cannot do, Father Lord. And I thank you, God, that you are a God of perfect timing, Father Lord. Lord, that you are not a God that is late, Father Lord, but you are a right on time, God, Father Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that your ways are higher than our ways and your thoughts are higher than our thoughts, Father Lord. Lord, that we only see through a glass that's half full, Father Lord, but Lord, you see the full picture, Father Lord. Lord, you see everything, Father Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the times, Lord, Lord, that you have intervened, Lord, that I don't even know, Father Lord, that you have intervened in that situation, Lord, to save us, Father Lord, to deliver us from harm, Father Lord. Lord, I thank you that your hand is upon us, Father Lord. Lord, according to your word, Lord, Lord, that we can rest under your shadow, Father Lord, for you are the God that is almighty, Father Lord, and that a thousand may fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand, Lord, but it shall not come near us, Father Lord, for you send your angels in charge concerning us, Father Lord. And Lord, I thank you, God, that you are our protector, Father Lord. You are a God, Father Lord, that goes before us, Lord. Lord, that you see the end from the beginning, God. You are a God of victory, God. And Lord, that you will see us through to victory, God. And I thank you for it now in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I just come to you tonight, Father Lord. Lord, I lift up Dr. B. And Ashley, Father Lord, and others, Lord, Lord, that are sick, Father Lord, that are that are facing COVID, Father Lord, and I curse COVID right now in the name of Jesus. I bind it now in the name of Jesus, and I render its effects useless in the name of Jesus, that it has no right in our body, and I evict it out by the blood of Jesus Christ, and I command you to leave their bodies now and every symptom now in the name of Jesus, and every one of them that are in the hospital on a sick bed I speak rise up and walk it's time for you to be restored to health you shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord and I rebuke this sickness now it's time for you to go back to the pits of hell where you came from I bind the spirit of fear behind it for God has not given me a spirit of fear but a power and love and a sound mind I come against the anxiety and I speak peace to it now. I speak peace that surpasses all understanding. May it guard their hearts and their mind. May you lift them up, Father Lord. Lord, it says in Job, Father Lord, that it's your breath in our lungs. So, Lord, I ask you now, Lord, that the Ruach of God would begin to breathe in lungs, Father Lord, and bring healing and deliverance now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you for it now in the mighty name of Jesus. And, Lord, I just lift up, Father Lord, Bob's son, Father BJ, Lord. Lord, the doctors have said, Lord, that he has stage two cancer. And I curse the spirit of cancer now. I say you have no right, no authority over the body. And I speak now that you have to leave at the blood of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus is against you now. So anybody that's facing cancer from the top of your head to the soles of their feet, I evict that spirit now. And I render it useless now in the name of Jesus and I command healthy cells in the body to begin to replicate and I command every cell that's erratic now to come into alignment with the word of God that they are fearfully and wonderfully made now in the mighty name of Jesus and Lord I thank you for it now in the name of Jesus and one last one before I turn it off uh, there's Jedediah who the, he's had four heart surgeries and he was born with a half heart but I know my God is not too big he will answer he is a God that, that of the impossible so right now Lord Lord we lift up Jedediah to you Father Lord Lord you are the creator Father Lord Lord you spoke your word Father Lord and and the earth came into existence so right now Father Lord Lord according to your word that by his stripes we are healed Father Lord Lord I speak healing over Jedediah's heart Lord I I pray, Lord, that you would create a creative miracle in him and begin to create a heart in him, Father Lord. And Lord, even if you did not create a heart in him, Father Lord, you are a miraculous God 
and that boy can live with a half heart. And that's probably a greater testimony that he can live and not lack anything, that he shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord, that his greatest days are not behind him, but they are ahead of him. Let him be a walking testimony to the doctor's father, Lord. Lord, that he is not lacking, Lord, but he is completing and filling his life, Father Lord. Lord, that he is not handicapped, but he is whole by the blood of Jesus, Lord. And I thank you, God, Lord, that you are moving, Father Lord, that you are answering prayers in this hour, Lord. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you are Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals us, Father Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that Lord, according to Psalms, Lord, Lord, that you heal all our sicknesses and all of our diseases, Father Lord. And Lord, we just speak healing right now, Lord, over every person, Father Lord. Lord, the, the, every feeble among us, Father Lord. Lord, I speak life into their body, Lord. Uh, Lord, I speak peace into their body, Father Lord. Lord, I speak alignment to your word, Lord. Lord, everything, Lord, that's out of order, Father Lord, we command it now by the blood of Jesus to come into alignment. Every sickness and disease has to bow to the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Everything that the enemy meant for evil, God, you turn it for good, Lord. Lord, your word says, Lord, that you have given us the authority to trample serpents and scorpions and over every scheme of the enemy and every sickness and disease of the enemy, Father Lord. So we curse it now and we command it to leave their bodies now and we speak life over to their bodies from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. May they come aligned with the word of God and we speak the blood of Jesus as against every sickness and disease in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you for it now, Lord, for the testimonies that are going to come in, Father Lord, for you touching them now, right where they're at, Father Lord. Lord, I thank you, God, that you are moving, Lord, over every sick person, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that we're coming into a season, Father Lord. Lord, where there be no feeble among us, Father Lord. Lord, that we will not be in lack, Father Lord. Lord, I just declare over your body right now, Father Lord. Lord, that we are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. We are blessed in this city. We are blessed coming in. We are blessed going out. That nations shall call us blessed. Our offspring is blessed. Father Lord, I thank you, God. Lord, that you are restoring, Father Lord, order in your body, Father Lord. Lord, you, you are raising up your army in this hour, Father Lord. You are calling sons and daughters, Father Lord, to be soldiers in your army, to speak your word, Father Lord. And not only to speak your word in this hour, Father Lord, but it shall follow with signs and wonders, Father Lord. As we speak your word, Father Lord, that it shall come to pass, Father Lord. Father Lord, for your word says, Father Lord, that when your word goes far out, Father Lord, Lord, that it will not return to you, Father Lord, without accomplishing everything that it's been sent out to do, Lord. So we speak your word now, Father Lord. Lord, over these cameras, Father Lord, into this atmosphere, Father Lord. Lord, that your word will go forth. And Father Lord, it will accomplish what it's been sent out to do right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we come to you this night in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Father. And we bow down, Father. And we reverence you, Father God. We bow down in humility. We bow down in the fear of the Lord, Father. We reverence you. We reverence the Lamb that sits upon the throne, Father God. We reverence Jesus, Father God. We exalt him, Father God. We magnify him this night, Father God. That he be exalted. That he be high and lifted up, Father God. That he walk, Father God, with us this night in prayer, Father God. In spirit, Father God. We honor the blood, Father. We honor the blood of the covenant in this house. Father, we honor the blood of the Lamb, Father. We honor the cross. We honor the sacrifice of the Son of God, Father God. Father, this night, Father God, we come, Father. As Dustin was praying earlier, Father God, we come against, Father God, every spirit of infirmity, Father God, against COVID, against every form of sickness and disease. In the name and in the authority of Jesus Christ, we curse you and we speak death to you. In the name of Jesus, we decry the blood 
blood of the Lamb of God against you. Father, we come this night, Father God. Every spirit, Father God, of infirmity, every spirit of fear, of doubt, of unbelief, Father God, every spirit of depression, of oppression, of anxiety, of low self-esteem, Father, we command him this night, be broken in the name and in the authority of the Son of God, and we decree the blood of the Lamb of God against you. We come this night, Father, against suicide. I come against the spirit of death. Death, I command you this night, loose the saints of God. I decree the blood against you, and I decree the authority of the Son of God against you. I speak as a son. I speak as an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Loose the saints of God. Now, Father, I ask you, as we command, we don't ask. We command death to flee this night from the saints. And, Father, I ask you now, in the name and in the authority of Jesus Christ, to loose life, Father God. All those, Father God, that had depression, that had oppression, that had anxiety, that had low self-esteem, that had a spirit of fear of death, Father God. They have been dismissed through the authority of the Son of God. Now I ask you, Father, right now, into all of these, Father God, to release peace. I decree the peace of God which passes all understanding to fill their hearts and their minds through Christ Jesus. Bring joy to them, Father. I decree this night, Father God, to every person who is suffering, Father God, with any form of sickness, with any form of disease, Father God. I speak death, Father God, to every viral germ in their body. I command it to be dismissed from their body. I decree, Father, according to covenant, Father God. The Word of God says, Father, according to covenant, by His stripes ye were healed. We stand in the covenant, Father, of Jehovah Rapha, according to Exodus 15, 23. For you are the Lord that heals. Now I ask you, Father, this night, Father God, as many of the saints, Father God, have been weakened, Father God, as they've been going through trials, Father God, struggling with sickness, with disease, with many other things, I ask you this night, Father God, that you would renew their strength, Father God, <laughs> that they would be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might, that you would rejuvenate the fire of God in them, Father God. That you would burn in them a fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost, Father God. That you would bring the word of God, Father God, alive into their hearts and into their spirits once again, Father God. That when they decree a thing, Father God, that the word would become rhema, Father. That it would be set ablaze by the life, by the breath, by the ruach of the Holy Spirit, Father God. That it would be alive, that they would know, that they know, that they know. That when they speak the word, Father God, that they know life would be coming forth into it father and we give you glory and we give you praise for it father and now father i ask you this night father god this night father in the white house in the governments, Father God, in leadership around the nation and around the world, Father God. I decree this night, Father God, that the fear of the Lord would be manifest, Father God, in the hearts of man this night, Father God. All those, Father God, who have not bowed their knee, Father God, who have lifted themselves up in pride and in arrogance, I decree this night that they would see, Father God, the fiery-eyed Lord of glory with fire in his eyes, fire from the waist up, fire from the waist down, Father God, that they would behold the fire eyed lamb of glory. Now, Father, I ask you this night that the Holy Spirit would go forth, Father God, and bring conviction, Father God, into the White House, into the government, Father God, that your people, Father God, when they would come to vote, Father God, that they would vote, Father God, according to the fear of the Lord and according to righteousness, Father God. That, Father God, that they would not fear man anymore, Father, but they would fear the Lord of glory, who is high and lifted up father god now father let the kingdom of god and of his christ come to the land again father god bring humility father god bring the fear of the lord father i ask you that your people this night father god would bow down in humility father and in the fear of the lord that your people would search their hearts O oh god and come back into a place of repentance lord god that they would bow down in humility and say, Father, forgive us. Father, I come this night, Father, in repentance, Father, for this nation, Father. On behalf of this nation, Father, forgive us, Father, 
for the innocent blood we have sinned. Father, forgive us for all that we have done, Father. I ask you, Father, to forgive us for taking you out of schools, Father, and for taking you out of this nation, Father God. I ask you, Father God, to forgive us, Father, for letting perversion, Father God, be right in the world's eyes. Forgive us, Father. We repent of these things, Father God. We bow down in humility, Father. And we ask you for forgiveness this night, Father God. And I ask you, Father, that as we repent, Father God, as we come in humility and the fear of the Lord, Father God, that you would bring us to repentance, Father, and that you would heal your land, O oh God. Heal your land, O oh God. And Father, I ask you this night, Father, let revival come, Father God, but let your people understand that revival is in each and every one of us, that the kingdom of God is in us, Father God, that we must, that we must fan the flames of revival that is in us, O oh God, that we must burn, Father, as never before, that we must pray, that we must fast, that we must walk in humility, O oh God, that, Father, that this night, Father God, that the Holy Spirit would sweep the land, O oh God, and bring revival, Father God, not only to this nation, Father, but to the nation of the earth, every tongue, every kindred, every village, Father God, shake them, O oh God, with the fire of revival, set them ablaze, Lord. I ask you, Father God, that this night, that the Holy Ghost would baptize with a demonstration of the Spirit of God and the power, Father God, to the multitudes, Father God, that some that are just saved, Father God, that some that have been sleeping, Father God, would stand in faith, Father, that as they stretch forth their hands, Father God, to heal, that healing would come, that deliverance would come, that blood that eyes would be open, that deaf ears would be unstopped, Father, that the dead would be rise, and that the kingdom of the gospel would be preached with the demonstration of your spirit and of your power, that signs and wonders would follow. Father, I ask this night, Father God, said the pastors, Father God, said the evangelists, Father, said the lay people, said the saints of God on fire, Father God. I ask you this night that the fire of the Holy Ghost would burn in them as never before, that they could no longer keep their mouth shut, Father, that they would say, the fire that is in my bones must be released. Let fire come out of them, Father. And I ask you, Father, that they would preach the gospel of the kingdom, Father God, with the demonstration of your spirit and of your power and they would not fear what man would say they would not fear what man would think Father God but they would fear only one he who can kill the body and send the soul to hell the Lord of glory Father let us bow down and worship you this night Father now I ask you Father bring revival to the White House bring revival to the schools Father God bring revivals in the families in their homes to the nations to the world places, O oh Lord, to the grocery stores, Father God. Let Jesus be high and lifted up, and let him be exalted wherever your people go, Father. Help us to walk in an atmosphere of God once again, Father, as in the book of Acts, Father God, with signs following, Father, with the demonstration of your spirit and of your power. We ask these things, Father, in the most holy and in the most precious name of Jesus Christ. When I was in my office today, I was praying, and the Holy Spirit gave me a word of encouragement to his saints. It's, it's in Philippians chapter 3, starting verse 13. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgiving, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, and I press toward the goal for the high prize of the upward call of God upon my life. This is, what, this is what he said. I wrote this down. He said, stop looking at where you have been and start looking at where you can be in Christ Jesus. You can't drive a car looking in the rearview mirror. What you're willing to walk away from will determine what I can bring you to. You'll never possess what you're, not, what you're unwilling to pursue. But some may say, I'm unworthy, Lord. I'm unworthy. My friend, do not ignore the will of God in your life because you feel unworthy. Your feelings are 
are not the truth. God's word and his grace is the ultimate truth and empowerment in your life to go beyond your own natural abilities. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12, 7, speaking about the messenger of Satan to buffet him and the thorn of his flesh, it said, and Jesus came to him and said, my grace is sufficient for you in strength, made perfect in weakness. Sometimes, friend, you need more than grace. You need great grace. You need abundance of grace. You need multiplied in great grace. Stop looking at his grace as a cover-up for sin. His grace goes beyond. His, his grace goes beyond your own natural abilities. God's grace looks beyond an obvious fault in a person waiting for his perfect work to be manifested in that person. God's grace gives you the empowerment through his Holy Spirit to live and do the truth that is ultimately demanded of us. Fill, fulfilling your assignment and being well pleasing before him through the fear of the Lord. God never leads us into a storm that he doesn't give us the power to overcome. No, none other than his grace. Paul ends every epistle with grace be with you. Amen. That's what he says. The last scripture in the Bible, the book of Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ. If you want a 2022 20, vision, here it is right here. He who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming quickly. I am even coming, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. This is the message to him. He says, you were created for purpose and predestined to greatness through his grace, working through faith in your life. Hebrews eleven six. he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently, speak, uh, diligently seek him. An experience of God that costs you nothing, does nothing, is worth nothing. Friend, I need more than forgiveness. I need cleansing. I need indwelling. I need an indwelling. I need indoing by the power of his grace. His grace is your empowerment in his life. Oh, Lord Jesus, I ask, Father, that you would empower your people by your grace to do what your truth demands, Lord. Father, I ask, Lord, that you would give every person the power of grace to go beyond their own natural ability and their, gra and their assignments, Lord, that they would walk in the gift that you've given them un unto them, Lord. I, we take authority over every assignment that the enemy's placed upon them to blind them from their assignments, to keep Keep them held back from their assignments. Satan, we command you to leave them in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians that you were bought at a price, the price of the blood of Jesus. You are not your own. You're God's property. So therefore, stand up. The victory is yours in Christ the Lord's. God will give you a mouth and wisdom in which no adversary will contradict you or resist you. You are you're, Greater is he that is within you than he that is within the world. Stand up and fight the good fight of faith. God's given you the victory. Nothing shall be impossible unto those that believe. Only believe. Only believe. And ask God for greater grace to be upon your life in Jesus' name. Jesus, 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 Jesus. When I uh, came into the building, I, I was a little late. Right over in the corner there, I felt a very strong anointing it almost knocked me down. And I know everybody feels different things in a prayer meeting. So I'm going to ask this. Is there anybody here, because I recognize most folks here, but for some reason, is there anybody here that came and really needed prayer or has come specifically for prayer? Did somebody drive in to the prayer meeting tonight for prayer? Anybody at all? Is there anybody that drove in for prayer? Is there a lady back here? Okay. Is there anybody else that drove in to, like to be prayed for, not for prayer, but you, to be prayed for? Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. Anybody at all? Anybody at all? All right. Um, here's what I want to do. I want us to really get in unity. Sometimes when we're, this is a big room. They just had a seminar here. There's probably 200 chairs out. And um, so it's a large room and it's, it spreads out. A lot of times when you're more, a little bit closer in, you have a little bit more uh, of one mind. I'm going to ask the people uh, that are here, and you can space yourself. You don't have to get real close, but space yourself a couple of feet if you want, to literally come across the front. i tell you what to do. See where that carpet and the wood meet. Stand on that and just come all the way around. And anyone who came 
tonight asking, or you came for prayer, I want you to come and stand kind of in the front and let all the people line up. Would you? So make that move right now, if you will, please. And uh, according to whatever that situation is. Uh, oh, oh, Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And like I said, you can space a little bit if it makes you more comfortable. Hallelujah. Now, anyone, again, that wants prayer, right here, you that want prayer, take about three steps forward, just a little bit. There you go. And that way we'll know who is being prayed for and uh, who is doing the praying. Uh, Now, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's a... We have been getting words uh, since the, the conference from different people across the United States. And there seems to be this theme that, that, that God is going to run a parallel track before long. And the people in the United States who have been belligerent of him and areas that are in belligerence are going to really suffer. And the people who <laughs> are following him are not. There's going to be, a, there's going to be, you want Bible for it? Yes. Someone said, I want Bible for it. Thank you. I just, the Holy Ghost read your mind. So here's your Bible for it. In the Exodus, it says there was light at Goshen, but darkness in Egypt. It says the cows of the Egyptians were destroyed by hell, but not one cow died among the Israelites. Hey, there's three examples where God says this. I will put a separation between your people and my people. And I want everybody to listen to me because someone said, you know, do you feel like that you have a word? And I said, we're in the days, we're in the parallel of the days of Elijah in which he went to Mount Carmel and he screamed out to Israel. He was not talking to those false prophets. He knew who they were. Why are you divided between two opinions? If God is God, radically go crazy him and serve him and outrun the horses of Ahab to the city of Jezreel and tell Jezebel she's coming down in Jesus' name. Jezebel's coming down. That spirit, we're not talking about, well, sometimes it is people, but that spirit. But there's been a lot of halting. So what did the prophet say? What What did Aaron say that time when they worshiped the cow? Who's on the Lord's side? You have to understand this, that this, is a, this, this that we see may be instigated by men, but it is the doings of the Lord to discover who is his remnant. Can I tell you, he already knows. But he wants you to visibly show and demonstrate to the world that you are one of those who just refuses to back down from what you know and believe. And the people who will not back down are going to be the people that God will supernaturally take care of and help through whatever it is. And, you know, people are being threatened to lose their job because of how they stand. You know what, honey, if you live in an old left-wing state, go ahead and lose it and come down here in the south where we got sense. We've got good, common, reasoning sense down here. How many of you know, we re-reason, we think, come reason together. And there's just some places they've lost common sense. The common sense went out the door. One guy told me, I'm just open-minded. I thought, yeah, you're so open-minded, your brains fell out a long time ago. Because you can't even reason the word of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, we got we to gotta be, be quiet, stay in the flow. Now, let's go down here, all of us, let's go down here and, and pray. For now, if you can, I'm not going to hold a microphone up or nothing like that to you, but if you'll tell us a little bit about just in a, in a statement, what is it we need? Well, my dad got contacted Lyme disease six years ago, and now it's gone into his muscles. He's okay, 92 he's, he's 92. Whoa, he's his dad's 92. I want to know how much he prayed, yeah. whatever. And 92, yeah. but he's got Lyme's disease, it's gone to his muscles, yeah. and that. But he, he can move real good before this. Yeah, All right. Let me ask you. Has anybody ever had Lyme's disease before? Anybody ever had that in the, in the room? I know some. Who? Eric has. Hey, did God touch you after, afterwards? 
Well, come, come and stand right behind him. Now, now, why am I getting him? Because he saw God help him with this same thing. Now, what that does, he has faith to believe. I've never had that disease. I've never dealt with that. Uh, okay. Recently? Oh, praise God. So God healed his back. Sleep in my, in yeah. my entire life, and I did. Okay. He said, you get up in the morning, you'll be able to move. But you had to yeah. believe it, yeah. didn't you? Yeah. Okay. All right, lay hands on him. Let's lay hands on What's your dad's name? Fred. Oh, what? That's <laughs> yeah, like, like me. <laughs> me. I know, I know that name. Everybody put your hands up. One mind now. No, no, don't think about lunch, dinner, breakfast. Don't think about getting in your car. We're, we're, I, you, I don't know what this man looks like, but I want you to picture a 92-year-old man who needs healing. Just picture him the way you want to. We, we all picture Jesus in our own way. Father, you've kept this man for 92 years. And I don't think you'd get him at age 92 and let a, a little tick take his muscles away from him. A little tick. Whatever was caused by that, Destroy it in the name of Jesus in his blood, cells, and muscles. And I ask you by the power of the Holy Ghost to touch Fred and take that Lyme disease out of his body. And in his very latter days and weeks of his life or months of his life, to let him be strong. And when he leaves this world, to leave a strong man and leave in peace. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I have been diagnosed with my senior grandma, which is an autoimmune disease. Okay. It only attacks men in the age after 60. Very hmm. Is it a blood in the blood? Oh, the nerves, nerves. Nerves, nerve, neuro, yeah. Into my abdomen. We're reaching over today. So what happens? Do you get pains? No, sir. Everything shuts down. Oh, your the body? Muscles don't work. At all? I, mean, I couldn't swallow. I like wow. Food. I went in the hospital and could not even swallow food. Wow. And they had to give me uh, IVIG, which is antibody. Yeah, to, yeah, right. You know. To flush it out like. I tell them five in the hospital, and I just finished my third treatment outpatient. Yeah. Wow. It affects my voice. Okay. My all right. Oh, and I gotta have my voice. yep. I gotta well, have you my said voice. it. You just said it. You just said it. I believe he can heal me. Oh, she and I'm all caught Oh, nine here. I'm a gracious God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the gifts of healing and the gift of working of miracles that comes by the Holy Spirit. Man doesn't do it. God does it through prayer. And we rebuke this infirmity. And I ask you, oh, oh, my, oh. God, to heal him in the name of the Lord. Somebody get, stay right, put your hands on both shoulders and just start praying in the spirit for him. God, strength, oh, whew, strengthen him, strengthen him. Str everybody, come on, pray with us now. Strengthen him, heal him, heal him of this neurological problem that's come against him recently. Let his speech return. Let his strength return. For the glory of God and for the glory of his son who saves and delivers and sets people free who believe in him. In the name of Jesus. Brother, stay right there. Stay right there. Soak it up. Soak it up. Praise God. My husband is an attack on my life and my son's life for five years. I've lost three homes. My body is deteriorating. I'm having neurological problems. My body. Oh, yeah. So I'm just praying that whatever happens, yeah, yeah, yeah. my finances, my family, my son, right, right. every curse will be broken. I 
Okay. I need three ladies to just whoever. Here's one. Here's one. We need one more. We need three. Now, I want you to, two or three shall agree. The reason we're getting three, and it says if we agree in the name of, now, it is not the will of God for her to be sick. Especially when, you know, you have children. You don't need, you can't, you, it's hard. It's, it's not the will of God for her to have any kind of financial difficulty that she has to work. Like the, let me say it this way. The will of God is, beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper. And that doesn't necessarily mean you got money coming out your ears. It just means your needs are taken care of. And be in health as your soul prospers. So I want you to pray for her. And I feel impressed. There's been like a spirit of confusion that's followed her for years of trying to determine what God's purpose is, what God's will is, where the Lord would have her. And it's just kept her, am I, is this right? It's kept you, conf, it's kept you totally confused. I mean, yes, and weak and weak. All right. Now, what we need to do is just say whatever thing from the generations, and, and you can have, I'm going to say this, this is not for you. I'm making a statement, though. You can pick up your ancestors' demons. If you, if you don't totally follow the Lord or you fall into the same cycle of speaking the way they did and word curses, then you can pick up, you'll open a door for the same kind of attacks that came to your mother, your dad, your grandma, and granddad. So what we want you to do is, oh, sorry. I, I went to do that, and I think I, think I put a scratch on her. That was an accident. <laughs> uh, she'll be okay. That's her husband right there. He said she'll be okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> We know them real well, so I gotta stay. I might have to start laughing here. So, what I want you to do is, I want you to to ask God to take the confusion out and to give her peace. And I want you to receive this, okay? And uh, do you go to do you go to the Rampo CI? Do you go to church there? I just got back to Cleveland like four days ago. Oh, you just got back? She was in Nebraska, and you know that gets real, that gets real cold. Yeah, and it, it, that gets very cold out there, too. I mean, I'm, I'm not just saying that. I couldn't live in cold. That's just me. All right, let's pray for everybody. Let's pray for her. Come on, lay hands on her. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray right now. We rebuke everything, Lord Jesus, that, that has brought confusion to her mind, Lord. And I just pray for the child, to her son. She talked about her son, Lord. I pray right now that the Spirit of God is going to touch this woman. It's going to touch her family. There's going to be a blessing of the Lord that's going to be released to her, Lord. Strength are going to come in Jesus' name. Strength is going to come in Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. In Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Let the Spirit of God have his way. Let the power of God have his way. Let the anointing of God break the yoke in Jesus' name. Break it in Jesus' name. Break the past in Jesus' name. God, anything, God, the, the spirits and the tormenting spirit in Jesus' name that would try to attack her. In the name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord. Let's everybody that's in the line, let's everybody that's in the line, let's praise, let's raise our hands now. Here's what I want to pray for now as God is still moving. There's a, and thankfully you don't see as many people passing as we used to. We're thankful for that. But there's a little second wave of this virus and the flu and the summer flu. And poor little Pam's been tested. She doesn't have it, but she just has a bronchitis that she's caught. And she's got her whole family coming in this weekend. And uh, bless her heart, I hear her coughing at night. And I just say, oh, Lord, I wish I could just do something for her and help her uh, because she's so sweet. But I want everybody to begin to pray that for those who believe in the Lord, who are having a battle like a summer battle physically, would you raise your hands and pray with me right now for that to begin to be broken and for God to begin to restore. Lord, we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. We come to you by the power and the anointing of God, Lord, and we ask you. We know that many of our people that are normally here were not able to be here tonight, Lord, so we ask you that wherever they're at, that you're strengthening their body, 
strengthen their mind, strengthen their spirit, strengthen their heart. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for, for, for deliverance, and we thank you for healing, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, that by the blood of Jesus and by the stripes on the back of the Lord that we are healed. In Jesus' name, that we are healed. God, I pray that there will be a breakthrough for those who are watching. I pray for every person who's watching, wherever they're watching from around the world, that they will come into an encounter with the Lord, that they will come into a spiritual encounter with God, that the power of God and the anointing of the Holy Spirit will break the yoke. Come on, let's raise our hands and pray out loud. Let's raise our hands and pray out loud. Hallelujah. If you have the Holy Spirit, would you just pray in the Spirit of God right now? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. We pray for those, God, that have felt a healing touch and it's partially manifested, and they know God has done something, I pray that they'll see it all the way through. I pray that they'll hold fast the confession of their faith, nothing wavering, and they will see it all the way through. They will see the blessing of God all the way through. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Handa be shebreto, be starebo. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you. We bless you right now. How many of you feel the anointing of the Lord releasing in this room? Now, everybody turn to the camera. There's a lot of prayer requests coming in. Now, I want the people watching me to know something, that Pam, my wife, takes Tuesday, sometimes starts on Monday, but on Monday, Tuesday, when she goes through these requests, I don't think there's a request she doesn't look at, and it's hundreds of requests. And so she's already seen it. Sometimes I can hear her mumbling under her breath, and I know what she's doing. She's praying. But for those of you watching, we're going to stretch our hand towards you, and this is for everybody on the screen. And I want you to agree with us. Now, if you're watching me and you send a request in, you know what you've written. The Lord saw it when you typed it out. I'm going to ask you for a few minutes to lift your voice twice as loud as you have been praying and let the energy and the, and the fervency of God come into your spirit. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you on behalf of everybody that's on this screen, every name that's here. Lord, you saw it, Pam saw it, but you saw it before they ever typed it out. It was in their heart, and it went from their heart, it went to a computer, and it went from a computer to a T1 line, and it went from a T1 line to a screen here in this prayer center. And I'm praying, God, for every one of these, and I pray, Lord Jesus, that there'll be a complete breakthrough, Lord. I pray, Father, they'll know the will of God. I pray, Father, that, the, that, that all the breakthroughs will come deliverance from meth God deliverance from sickness Heavenly Father deliverance by the power of the name of Jesus and by the power of the blood of the Lamb I pray Father that there will be supernatural manifestations you are a God that still does everything that you used to do you're the same yesterday today and forever God I pray right now for this Sean that has loneliness Heavenly Father and I just pray God and let's pray against suicide somebody's real depressed right now God I pray against hopelessness I pray against the spirit of suicide. I pray that Almighty God will divinely intervene and reach his arms around those people right where they are watching right now and begin to raise them up for the glory of God and begin to touch them by the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Father, I praise you. Holy Father, I worship you. And I thank you for the blood of Jesus. And I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for the power of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. 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 Thank you, Lord. Give us wisdom and guidance and direction in the way that you would have us to go for all of these people. Give them wisdom, guidance, and direction. God, open up their heart, their mind, and their spirit. And let there be many people need healing. Many people need deliverance. Many people need salvation. Family members need salvation. So help them in Christ's name. In the name of Jesus, by the blood of the Lamb, by the power of the Holy Ghost, let there be help. Let there be strength. Let there be an anointing. Now, everybody just reach a hand on somebody's shoulder and start praying for them now. Praise your name, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Glory, 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 glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, 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 God. Move upon every person. <coughs> 
provide, we pray, Lord, for those who have written in a request for financial provision. I pray in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you. I cannot express in words my appreciation for you, God. I cannot express in words how much, how grateful I am, Lord, for what I'm seeing you do in the voice of evangelism ministry. And I just ask you, Father, to continue to save many people, redeem many people, fill many people with the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. God, this long line of men and women that are praying in the front right here, I pray for them that your Spirit will minister. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. For those of you that are still online with us, and normally we'll have several thousand, and, and when this is re-aired, there'll be sometimes ten to 15,000 people that will pray the prayers with us, and we certainly appreciate that. But we do want to simply share with you something uh, important. In a few months, we don't have the exact time, but we, we're going to be remodeling this complete hall and, uh, and, and, and making our... Uh, it's going to be the display of the history of the Holy Land with relics from the Holy Land. It's going to have signs and video. It's going to be a most remarkable place where tens of thousands of people will come as they travel down the interstate and stop by to see the history of the Bible. And it's not just about history. It deals with proving the Bible is the Word of God. we got a generation that don't even know anything about the Bible. And I want people to come in here and see things and read the Scripture where that object was you're going to see things at Abraham's day, Isaac's day, Jacob's day, Moses' time. You're going to see things that go uh, back to the early church. I have the actual mirrors that women carried with them that they looked into that Paul said we see through a glass darkly. I have three of them. And they were in the pockets of Christian women, no doubt, from the time. And how do we know? Because some of them, some things have crosses on them. And it's, it's, there's, stuff, there's stuff that you've never dreamed of in your life, and the Bible is going to come alive. So we're going to continue to pray here, and the reason I'm sharing that is I announced it a few weeks ago and people did not know what the plan was. The architect is uh, designing the building. In fact, we've got some features that we're going to put in here that are going to be remarkable. And then prayer is going to go where it originally was. In fact, we used to have 150, 200 people, 100 people, 80 people. It's going to go to the small hall at Omega Center International and there'll be, there'll be cameras that will be set up there. ISO offices will remain right where they are. They're not moving. They're staying right here where they're at and that, that they're going to be able to do everything that they did. Dr. Cut Shaw and I have discussed he's going to move. He's going to have to move it anyway because he's going to run out of space in this little room. But he's going to move the uh, studio sessions. And he, at first he thought, you know, he likes the intimacy of this room. And he thought, well, the, you know, the bigger you are, the bigger the plant can grow in the pot. <laughs> so he's going to be doing all the studio sessions at the big hall at Omega Center with the big screens, which will be a benefit to you because you can see better. <laughs> if you've ever used the little ones versus the big ones, you know you can see better. But this is a plan, and we're going to be working this this year. And uh, and I, I can't tell you, all of this dropped in our lap. I did not ask God for it. I did not pray for it. It was cleared by the Israeli government and the museum. Now, I want to tell you, listen to what happened. To show you this is the Lord. To show you this is the Lord. You know what? Let me go off the air because everybody doesn't need to hear this, what I'm about to say. But I'm going to share some things. That's why you need to come to prayer. When we go off the camera, that's when the good start stuff starts most of the time. But if you, uh, Dr. Cutshaw has a word. And if you'd like to support the prayer movement and support the prayer, because, you know, this electricity is not free that we and, and we have people back in the back. We've got folks on cameras and sound men to bring prayer to you at no cost. But if you'd like to support it, you can. So, Jonathan, if you'll put, put that uh, up there, and there's the way that you can give. And we just appreciate those of you. And we do have some people that will contact us and just say we want to be a supporter of the world prayer. So thank you for joining us today uh, here. And Dr. Cutshaw is out, but he'll be back, uh, I believe, next. I believe he'll be back next Tuesday, next week, okay? And uh, we have had a great service Tuesday night. Andrew Tau can preach. 
goodness sakes alive. And he's a revelator. He did, it's not just his delivery. He tells you something. I'm sitting there saying, that's my boy. <laughs> that's my boy. Because he came up under me eight years of age when uh, he was singing for me at camp meeting. And so I have a legacy with so many of these people. And just to watch them come and preach, Joel Talley got called to preach under my ministry. And it's like a spiritual dad sitting out there watching his boys. And I'm just, one of these days you're going to see me take off running. I'm afraid to do it because I'll probably trip and fall and then I have to go to the doctor. You know, the way 63, you don't run like you used to. But we thank you for joining us, and we're going to go off the air now. Just rem Oh, no, oh no, we're not. Come back, come back, come back. Ha <laughs> uh, ha. On the 20, give me that date. On the last Sunday, Pam, I want to make sure I'm doing this right because I know we have plans. The, it's this, the last Sunday of July 24th. Does that sound right? We're going to do an Awaken America uh, event here in the hall, and we're letting you know that because many of you want to drive in for that. We want to say, so that would be, again, what is that? July 24th. Tw July 24th at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And I don't have to fly out anywhere, I don't think, that day, the last time I had to leave. And we're going to be in Texas for some work and some business, some things we have to take care of, and also visiting some people there for about a week next week. So if you don't see Pam and I there, you know we're out of town because Pam – uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm over there at the office and said, oh my goodness, it's seven o'clock. I need to be in church. And I, then I run over there, but she's always on time. Look at Pam and say she's on time. She really is. I appreciate that. So thank you for joining us again and God bless you. Amen.